welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. Here's what we have in store for you on this October 21st, 2013 edition. Tonight on the InfoWars Nightly News, Alex Jones is back from a historical pro-carry rally at the Alamo. Prepare to be inspired. Plus, the stenographer rant that wasn't. New video shows the true source of the audio. Then, was today's theater in the Rose Garden just another gimmick? This happens when I talk too long. All that and more on the InfoWars Nightly News. Top story headline. Despite media fear mongering, no injuries reported at gun rally. Now, of course, this is the come and take it rally in San Antonio. Many of the InfoWars crew, including myself, went down there. And we'll talk about that more later on in the end of this broadcast. You can stay tuned and see Alex Jones's full report, his full speech at that open carry rally. But right now, I want to talk about a different aspect of the rally. Photos. Protest against gun rally gets virtually no participants. Now, this was the mom's demand action. If you keep up with the InfoWars Nightly News, you'll know we've talked about these people before with Mike Martinez here in the city of Austin, our Austin City Council member, saying that he wants to make the gun ban legitimate. You can go to prisonplanet.tv in the archives and see that for yourself. But particularly that image that we just showed on screen, if we could put that back up for our viewers, you see the lady right there in the red. She works for the Brady campaign, and you can see it right there. So when Alex Jones shows up to this counter protest, which was down the street from the large Alamo protest, uh, he was met with some very harsh uh, words, very stern faces, because I'm sure the people are very well-meaning, even though they're very ill-mannered. Uh, Alex Jones approaches them, and they come at him very aggressively. The gentleman you see right there actually chest bumps Alex, like it's a, a baseball game, and he's the umpire bumping up against his chest. And I'll talk more about this in the interview segment with David Knight as we both share our experiences at the rally. Now, Paul Joseph Watson asked the question, bizarre mind control caught on camera? Television news reports and online mainstream news reports said that Reedy was saying these words, this quote about Freemasons writing the Constitution, when she was up at the speaker's platform, except that she wasn't. As you can see from this video, those words were actually spoken after they had already dragged Reedy away and were in a separate part of the building near the elevator. If this is not one nation under God, it never was. Had it been, it would not have been. No. It would not have been. Reedy told Chad Pergram, a Fox News reporter, that, quote, the Holy Spirit has been waking me up in the middle of the night to deliver a message in the House chamber. Whether you believe that's God or somebody else, she's saying that she's been put up to this by a third party. They see Reedy's engaged in a conversation with the white-haired guy. Here's the clip. Seems perfectly happy, seems to be smiling having a casual conversation. Watch the guy with the white hair. He walks up to her, she looks at him, seems to be normal, normal conversation. Right there he gives her a nod. Suddenly she gets up in this bizarre trance-like calm state, walks up to the podium and begins to give her rent. Then the white haired guy you can see here immediately goes to his cell phone and appears to be sending a text to someone as Reedy began, begins her rant in the background. He's not looking at it, even though everybody else is, at least for now. Seems like he's expecting it. Finally, he looks up, and then she continues with her rant. And you can go to Infowars.com and see Paul's full report for yourself. Report, massive vulnerability detected in national power grids. There is no way to stop this, says a panel of experts. According to one group of engineers, the grid is so vulnerable that it wouldn't even require a skilled hacker to compromise it. The consequences, according to the engineers, who note that they are in no way security specialists, could be a total downing of the national power grid, with nodes across the nation being taken over all at once. Uh, this reminds me of the FEMA drill, the FAME FEMA drill is coming up that simulates just this uh, just this scenario. 
And it also uh, makes me very suspicious as why we would hack, uh, excuse me, tie in so much of our infrastructure into the internet. It's a very uh, short-sighted thing in my view, but more than any other country in the world, I believe, the U.S. is tied into the power grid via the internet and uh, seems like it's time that we get away from that uh, type of scenario. Family suspects SEAL Team 6 crash was an inside job, and InfoWars has talked to Charlie Strange about just this issue. And you put all of the things together in this matter, and it raises uh, the likelihood that somehow security was breached, that the, the Taliban knew that these SEALs were coming their way, and it's most likely that Afghanistan was behind it. Because they try to play both sides of the fence. President Karzai of Afghanistan is extremely corrupt. He may have even made a lot of money by giving up these seals. Oh, yeah. You know, all of these things are things that are going to be explored in this lawsuit because we're going to have the opportunity to take discovery and gather documents and those kinds of things. So we'll wait for the ultimate conclusion, but we have enough evidence right now to have sued these entities. Let, let, let's review a little bit of what happened there. So basically you have a, a helicopter situation where it goes in, everybody is told that it was a helicopter crash that everybody died in, but then we see that the bodies are not burned, many of them. Uh, however, they are cremated. Uh, even though the bodies are intact, uh, that looks like a cover-up there. We learn that fire control officers and others are told to basically stand down. We also learn that there are suspicious Afghans on the helicopter as well, and they're, they're taken off. Other Afghans who are supposed to be on the helicopter are taken off. New ones are put on. We don't know who they are. And we see that uh, there's a uh, suspicious communication about this tower. We see that Afghans are immediately celebrating that they got SEAL Team 6, which looks like they got information. You're putting all of this stuff together, and then, Mr. Strange, you get a, uh, information from, is it Rob Kadera told you that he could hear every message you said? Is that correct? Somebody named Rob Kadera? Yeah. And who is Rob yeah. Kadera? Could you tell everyone who that is? He was one of the Navy personnel that, uh, one of the four that came up to us, and, uh, that was telling us, him and Jamie Cotter, that everybody had to be cremated August uh, 6th and 7th. And it's time for more people to speak out about these incidents that they don't buy the official story of. And one thing I'm not buying is healthcare.gov running on hope and change. And don't forget, you can also dial 1-800-FU and get the full skinny there as well. More than two weeks after the hoax site, of the launch of the fake shell website, healthcare.gov, which did not function, the Obama administration has announced plans to bring real programmers and attempt to build an online federal health exchange site that actually functions. Now, Mike Adams, in addition to being the health ranger, is also a very formidable computer programmer. And he's saying that when he first inspected the healthcare.gov website, he found that through his analysis is not meant to work or function as they claim it's supposed to. And also John McAfee was on the Alex Jones radio show this morning, and he said he was somewhat recruited to come work out these bugs. I'm not exactly sure if he's going to take them up on that offer, but I'm pretty sure when McAfee of uh, McAfee Antivirus Software takes a look at the healthcare.gov website, he's going to come to a similar conclusion that Mike Adams had, that this thing wasn't really supposed to work in the first place. Now we'll end with this from failing websites to fainting women. Was fainting woman at Obamacare speech staged? You've probably heard that healthcare.gov, the new website where people can apply for health insurance and browse and buy affordable plans in most states, hasn't worked as smoothly as it was supposed to work. There you go, you're okay. I'm right here. I got you. Yeah, yeah. No, no, you're, you're okay. This happens when I talk too long. <laughs> you'll, you'll be okay. Here, why don't you go ski on it? Come on. Yeah. No, 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 hold on. Uh, I'm talking about there's somebody who might have fainted right down here. Somebody just fell. They probably fell a little bit faint. We have somebody who fainted. Hold on, we got somebody who's sick. We've got somebody down here. Do we, we already have the paramedic coming? Is somebody okay? Did somebody just get faint? It looks like we have somebody who may have fainted. Hold on a second, young lady. You okay? Why don't you sit down, though? So somebody guide her out and let her sit down, because she's just feeling a little faint. 
I, I, I'm sure they're okay. They're, sometimes folks faint because they've been standing too long. Now, first of all, I'm not saying that this particular incident with this woman was staged. Uh, she appeared to have a bump. She may have been pregnant, had some other health dif difficulties. You can see her kind of waning there while uh, Obama is speaking. My concern and the questions I have with this incident is why did she wait to fall until Obama turned and looked directly at her? Why didn't she fall before? Uh, why didn't she fall after? It's like he turned and he looked and it's like, you know, those old Elvis concerts where, oh, Elvis looked at me and I got the vapors and they just fall over, you fall on the floor like James Brown or something. And I'm not saying all these events are staged, but uh, doing the research uh, that Paul, excuse me, that Steve Watson did, and I found out this wasn't an isolated incident, the incident. This has happened many times before. It does make it somewhat suspicious to me. So if you don't like Obamacare and you don't want to pass out on stage, maybe you should stop by the Infowars shop and pick up an Obamacare t-shirt. You can see it has the spinning wheel of death on it right there. and also says death panels are cool, which you'll uh, come to experience, uh, I'm sure, sometime in the near future. So stop by the Infowars shop and pick that up. And also stop by prisonplanet.tv and get yourself a 15-day free trial you get the Alex Jones radio show, the nightly news, the special reports, all that and so much more. So stay tuned because after this break, we'll show you a short excerpt of Alex's speech at the Alamo. And then stay tuned after that for my special report, or should I say my interview with David Knight, where we talk about our experiences at the Alamo. Then the grand finale after the InfoWars nightly news, you can see the full speech Alex Jones had at the Alamo and also his encounter with Moms Demand Action. So you don't want to miss that. So stay tuned for all that coming up next. Alex Jones here to warn you about some of the most important health information you may ever hear. I'm talking about radiation, radioactive fallout, radioactive particles contaminating the Northern Hemisphere. Conservatively, since the 1940s, the Northern Hemisphere of our planet has more than doubled its background radiation. In fact, that was before Fukushima exploded. Now the levels are going up and up and up. Fish are contaminated in the Pacific, and the FDA, the EPA, and others, they're not worried about it. They've been raising the levels of what they claim is safe radioactive particles. So after more than two years of research into how to protect my family, looking at all the literature, talking to the experts, across the board they agreed, iodine is key, but of the family of iodine, nascent, natural, non-GMO, non-factory iodine that comes from the earth is absolutely paramount for your thyroid and other functions in the body. The literature, the research, it's there. It's not my opinion. It is admitted that iodine is essential for the health of our bodies overall and nascent iodine is the best form. Now, we're announcing the launch of InfoWarsLife.com, and we're going to bring you scores of products over the next few years that we're researching and developing. But nascent iodine is the first product we're coming out with because it's so important, and it's also listed as a fluoride detoxer. It does so many other things. Your body needs it, and when you don't have enough iodine, forget the radiation, your thyroid absorbs the sodium fluoride and other things. Nascent iodine and InfoWars Life Survival Shield in double strength at half the cost of the leading competitors. Please visit InfoWarsLife.com today. Now, this weekend, InfoWars went to the Come and Take It rally in San Antonio, Texas. Alex Jones had a very powerful speech that we're going to show you right now. His voice goes out, but it's still a good speech, so here you go. First off, I want to salute everybody who came out here in defiance of tyranny. Civilizations go one way or the other. You either become more free or you become enslaved. And there are only a few countries worldwide where you can still own firearms. Governments worldwide controlled by powerful anti-free market corporate interests like Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan and others have financed programs from Australia to France, from England to South Africa to disarm the people. 
whether it was King George 235 years ago who wanted disarmed slaves, or whether it was Santa Anna 177 years ago, or whether it was Adolf Hitler or Mao Zedong, these scumbags are all the same! They are bullies that think we're going to lay down to them and lick their boots. I can assure you that if William Barrett Travis was here or the others that died in this sacred shrine were here, they would give us a rebel yell of liberty. I can assure you they knew full well they were going to die, but they were so angry watching people tied up and shot in the back of the head all over Texas because they wouldn't turn their guns in that they came down here to show an example of what you do in the face of tyrants. And that's what you're doing here right now, today. And I'll tell you, I'm no different than my ancestors. You're no different than your ancestors. My ancestors on both sides of my family started the Texas Revolution. And I'm here to tell you that revolution was a continuation of human beings fighting against bullies and tyrants in every civilization throughout history. And this is the struggle of the individual against the bullies and the tyrants. And I salute you all for being here today. Now, that was a wild time out in San Antonio. There's a bunch of cops up in the windows and all kinds of things going on. But don't fret if you didn't get to make it out to the Alamo. I'm told they're going to have another come and take it rally right here in the city of Austin coming up soon. But for right now, we go to Tyranny Watch about Obamacare. Welcome to Tyranny Watch. I'm Gigi Ornetta. Topping our list, Obamacare, the new tax dressed as health care. It's insurance, people. It is not health care. When are people going to realize that? Well, I guess they'll realize it once they can actually log in. And here's some intelligence coming from Consumer Reports. Stay away from healthcare.gov. They say to avoid the federal health care exchange for at least another month if you can. 271,000 of the 9.47 million people who tried to sign up the first week managed to create an account. Not actually sign up for health care, but create an account. Keep in mind when you hit the accept button, you're giving up your privacy. It says so right there on terms and conditions. And your Obamacare comes with free eugenics, completely targeting the Catholics. The HHS mandate would compel many religious believers and employers to provide abortifacients, contraceptives, and sterilizations to women. The end result is several Catholic agencies would not qualify for the religious exemption, but they could still be compelled to choose between contracting a plan that does provide the objectionable service or paying crippling fines for noncompliance. As more information comes out about the healthcare.gov website and all of its problems, the question is, are the doctors using the same program to input your medical information? Because that is one scary thought. I'm Gigi Arnetta for Tyranny Watch on the InfoWars Nightly News. Now stay tuned because after this break, I'll be talking with David Knight about our Alamo experiences. And also, the grand finale, you don't want to miss it, Alex Jones' speech at the Alamo and also his confrontation with Moms Demand Action. Many anthropologists and archaeologists believe that before man even discovered uh, the power to harness and use fire, we were involved in agrarian activities. That is, taking the seeds of plants and then replanting them to produce more. The very foundation of our modern civilization and human culture is centered around the planting and cultivation of edible plants. Here are some of the amazing deals at InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. The Survival Seed Vault by My Patriot Supply features only the finest survival heirloom seeds for a robust and hardy garden, even in the toughest times. We also have starter varieties of the deluxe seed packages for fruit, salad, salsa, peppers, medical herbs, and more. Go to the InfoWars Seed Center at InfoWarsShop.com. And remember, the revolution against tyranny is growing. 
introducing Pro One. All of your filtration in one system, portable, on the go. No more do you have two or three filters to just reduce sodium fluoride. You have a system that cuts out the sodium fluoride and up to 95% of hydrofluorosilicic acid. Advanced manufacturing technology combines silver impregnated white ceramic with new Aquamedics advanced media for removal of fluoride and other heavy metals all in one filter element. It is the only one that does it and out of the gates, we have it discounted at 10% off with promo code WATER. This is the only system that in one unit helps reduce or remove pesticides, herbicides, chloramines, ammonia and chlorine, hydrofluorosilicic acid, the most common form of fluoride not covered by other fluoride filter brands, and sodium hexafluorosilicate. Get your Pro Pure with a new Pro One filter today at InfoWarsStore.com or by calling 888-253-3139. And welcome back. The arrest of C.J. Grisham, the arrest of Terry Holcomb, not to mention the guys cited for legally carrying their firearms outside of a Starbucks. These are some of the things that led up to the Alamo March. And to talk more about this, we have David Knight. Thanks for joining us, David. Thank you, Jakari. It's quite a rally. Yeah, it really was. And you know those cases you're talking about, three different cities, uh, one just a bit south of... Uh, Dallas, mm -hmm. then Austin, then down in San Antonio. So this is something that's happening everywhere, where people are getting arrested for lawfully carrying openly guns that are, they're allowed to carry. And, and for the people who don't know, I just want everybody to understand, it is legal in the state of Texas to carry a long gun, your shotgun, your rifle, even if it's loaded, that's completely legal. That's right. And as you shot at the state capitol here in Austin, one of the open carry fellows was carrying a vintage pistol, mm -hmm. which is also expressly permitted in the law. Oh, yes. And you got, tried to get the police officer to read that, and he got down to that part and he kind of mumbled off and wouldn't read it. Yeah, he, he didn't want anything to do with that, that law that Jerry Patterson made back in 1995. That's right. So he knew the law, but he still wanted to arrest us. After they started the arrest, they're mm -hmm. not going to back down. They're not going to say that they're wrong. We exactly. see this happening over and over again. And what they're doing is kind of using a novel interpretation of the word alarming. They're saying that you can't carry it in an alarming manner or whatever. And in other words, threatening other people. Mm -hmm. But they're, carry they're arresting people who are carrying with weapons just slung over their shoulder. Right, and that's Not what Jerry Patterson said. He said, how is somebody carrying in a manner calculated to cause alarm if they have a gun, by, lo and behold, in their holster? That's right. But one of the points that they're making in this open carry rally was that people are getting alarmed just at the sight of guns. Mm -hmm. They've been so overly sensitized to them in movies seeing as soon as you see a gun, you're going to see some shooting. And they're not used to seeing them on the streets if they're not somebody that owns a gun. So that was a large part of it, to let people see a large number of people peacefully carrying guns. And I noticed, David, there are many tourists, uh, there are many people there just for the open carry march, but also the normal Alamo, Alamo tourists. And nobody was running in fear, nobody was screaming and, you That's know, right. hollering. It, it was a very peaceful scene. That's right. And a wide variety of people, too. All ages, both sexes, a lot of races represented there. I mean, it was very diverse crowd. It's very amusing. You know, you see people, young kids with uh, anonymous masks, and mm -hmm. you see a reenactor in a full uh, Alamo outfit right next to him. Right, and, then cool. the, and of course, the <laughs> veterans out there as well. That's right. A lot. Now, you touched on both sexes, and that's what I want to spend a little bit of time on. The Moms Demand Action, you know, the group we met here in Austin back uh, earlier this year when yeah. Mike Martinez was their special guest speaker. Uh, they were in attendance. They posted on their own Facebook. I want everybody to go and check this out, the Moms Demand Action Facebook, that they were going to have a counter protest. Mm -hmm. So lo and behold, you know, Alex finishes his speech and he says, let's go down to this, to this Moms Demand Action rally, uh, the, the whopping crowd of about five people or so. And he's immediately approached with aggression. Why are you here, Alex Jones? I saw you on Pierce Morgan. Yeah. I don't like you. And it was very amusing to me that a group that's having a counter protest, it wasn't just they happened to be there that day. It says on their Facebook page, it was a counter protest. They even posted a picture of C.J. Grisham, uh, one of the heads of the open carry groups. And now cool. they're shocked that somebody came to their counter protest. They, they really didn't do much of a protest. They were so far away from where the gun rally was, it was hard for us to find them. Mm -hmm. We went down once, walked a very long way with Anthony Gucciardi trying to find them, couldn't find them, came back, got some more specific information, took a car to go get to them. But, uh, and the reason for that was they didn't have very many people there, four or five people maybe. 
they were very char uh, charitably told. One of the, the newspaper articles said that they had 24 people. That was very yeah. charitable. I don't see it. There, there wasn't 24 people there when the we were there. And, That's yeah. right. Well, there were a lot of people that were stopping by in the restaurant. Mm -hmm. They also got interviewed by Al Jazeera, came up towards the end of the time that we were there, and they were happy to talk to other media. They didn't want to talk to Alex because Alex was talking to them about facts and statistics. Mm -hmm. When they wanted to talk about registration, he said, fine, you want to register people going taking a bath in a bathtub or a knife because a lot more people are killed in bathtubs than they are with firearms. Mm -hmm. They didn't want to talk about that. They didn't want to talk about drug use and drugs being the underlying factor in a lot of these, uh, well, all of these mass shootings. You find that there's some connection to SSRI drugs or antidepressants. Now, Dave, we also saw the police chief there who had uh had some things to say about the rally, uh, excuse me, at, about the arrest at the Starbucks. And, you know, he said that officers acted appropriately with mm -hmm. the information they had at the time. And I had a chance to speak with him very briefly. And I said, is anybody here carrying in a manner calculated to cause alarm? He said, no. And we also saw the police up in the windows. And Yeah, they were taking video of everybody. They weren't. And that was another point that Anthony and Gucciardi confronted one of the policemen on was, why are you here? Why aren't you down there filming the the moms. Well, of course, there was nobody at the moms anyway. But uh, they said, oh, we heard there was going to be some trouble here. So they I'm thinking. not sure where they heard that because one of the heads of the group, C.J. Grisham, at the beginning of the rally, he comes out and he says, you know, we want everybody, this, this is a safe event, a fun event, families are there, and we'll talk about your family being there as well. Mm -hmm. But he says, just for the sake of everybody, for everybody's state of mind, can you please unload your weapon and also put a straw in the chamber to show that you have an unloaded weapon. So you see all these guys and girls walking around with their firearms and they're clearly unloaded so nobody had a reason to be alarmed as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, and at the beginning of the rally, they pointed out that there were some cops in the window at a building that faced the rally, an older building up at the top floor, taking pictures. And when they, everybody turned around, he kind of got out of the, uh, yeah, he didn't yeah. want to have his picture taken. Right. But we got some pictures of him later on. But yeah, it's very interesting. The people were not embarrassed about carrying firearms. They were carrying them peacefully, letting people see that. And you know, it's kind of interesting that there's many more times the number of people that actually defended the Alamo were there yesterday carrying arms. And as Alex pointed out, that was the reason, mm -hmm. the reason. It wasn't a side reason. That was the reason for the Alamo, was right. that the dictator, Santa Ana, wanted to take their weapons. And of course, if you look at history, you find that Jim Bowie and others had become Mexican citizens. They had brought in, opened up factories in the case of Jim Bowie, invested a lot of money there. And it was because of policies similar to the ones that we see happening in this country mm -hmm. that they started cracking down on the people in Mexico. And uh, then finally came after their guns because they knew that eventually they were going to do things to them that people would fight back against. And that was the point at which the, uh, everything started. Now, to anybody who would think that this was some crazy uh, group of guys out there waving their guns around, scaring people, this was a very family-friendly event. And matter of fact, David, you took your family to this event. Oh, yeah. Yeah, if we hadn't been shooting, we would have been there. Absolutely. It was a great event. There, was, uh, there were several other kids that were there. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them had some toy guns, that sort of thing. So... I grew up with uh, toy guns and, you know, get the real thing. That's, that's the way it used to be. I mean, every other show when I was growing up was a TV Western. Mm -hmm. So that was something we grew up with. But you don't see that anymore. No. Now all you see are guns with police and you see guns with the, uh, the criminals. And I know when, even when my sons were young, I went to Toys R Us to try to get them some cowboy guns. And all they, would, all they had was a riot police gear set. Yeah, that's and I exactly. didn't want them playing riot police. <laughs> we don't want our kids playing riot police. We just want them to be yeah. good, upstanding citizens. Well, that's right. Thank you for your time, David. Thank you. And I'm told we're to have another come and take it rally here in the state of Texas, this time in Austin. So if you want to be prepared for that, stop by the InfoWars shop and pick up your come and take it t-shirt. It's right there on the InfoWars shop. And also, if you want to support this broadcast, stop by PrisonPlanet.tv and get yourself a 15-day free trial. Well, I'm Jakari Jackson for the InfoWars Nightly News. But don't forget, Alex's full speech is coming up right after this. Have a good night. Stay tuned after the news for more special reports. Now you can watch the Alex Jones Show live as it happens at InfoWars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at InfoWars.com slash show. Please welcome Alex Jones.
please welcome Alex Jones. Give me liberty or give me death! First off, I want to salute everybody who came out here in defiance of tyranny! Civilizations go one way or the other. You either become more free or you become enslaved. And there are only a few countries worldwide where you can still own firearms. Governments worldwide controlled by powerful anti-free market corporate interests like Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan and others have financed programs from Australia to France, from England to South Africa to disarm the people. Whether it was King George 235 years ago who wanted disarmed slaves, or whether it was Santa Ana 177 years ago, or whether it was Adolf Hitler or Mao Zedong, these scumbags are all the same! They are bullies that think we're going to lay down to them and lick their boots! I can assure you that if William Barrett Travis was here, or the others that died in this sacred shrine were here, they would give us a rebel yell of liberty! I can assure you they knew full well they were gonna die, but they were so angry watching people tied up and shot in the back of the head all over Texas because they wouldn't turn their guns in that they came down here to show an example of what you do in the face of tyrants! you, I'm no different than my ancestors, you're no different than your ancestors. My ancestors on both sides of my family started the Texas Revolution, and I'm here to tell you that revolution was a continuation of human beings fighting against bullies and tyrants in every civilization throughout history, and this is the struggle of the individual against the bullies and the tyrants, and I salute you all for being here today. This is the heart of 1776. It wasn't one of the reasons that the war against King George began. It was the central, main, final reason at Lexington and Concord. And it wasn't one of the reasons there was a rebellion against the dictator Santa Ana, later thrown out in Mexico proper. It was the main central reason they met at Washington on the Brazos, where my great, 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 great grandfather Heirs helped kick the whole thing off to say we're not turning our guns in and we're not running and we're not backing down. If you want them, come and take them. And make no mistake, the entire world is watching us. There are shrines in here sent from places like Japan. And our fight for liberty includes every man, woman, and child, black, white, Hispanic, Asian, old, young. It doesn't matter. You have a right to self-defense, and that's what this is all about. There is a fight worldwide to take your guns. Dianne Feinstein, Handgun Control Incorporated, the few dozen Democratic Party operatives, they're going to have marching here in a little while. Uh, the so-called moms, they are here to disarm you while Homeland Security buys tens of thousands of armored vehicles and buys billions of bullets and trains with paper targets of little children. As Patrick Henry said, they're already gearing up. They're already getting ready. These weapons are for us and none other. And that's why we're here in defiance. And I will assure you, I will tell you right now, that if the people that died here could see us now, and I believe they can, they would be proud of each and every one of you, and I salute you again. They died for us, and countless others throughout history died for us. I don't normally blow my voice out in about 30 seconds, but I tell you, this is sacred ground here, just like Lexington, just like Concord. My friends, it's all about standing up against tyranny. And it is about liberty or death. It is what Travis put in that final letter. Victory or death. Because the victory, the victory, my friends, was the fight for the right to self-defense and not being slaves. I want Mexico today to get a Second Amendment. Do you think Mexico would be the murder capital of the world? 
right now? Do you think they would be the murder capital of the world right now if they had a Second Amendment? They are a countrywide Chicago where only the criminals have the guns. And that's why we need to have 1776 worldwide. That's why. Drink some water here. I'm almost done, folks. But I had to come down here just to tell you that the police officers that are here, the Homeland Security people that are here, all of them, you are going to be enslaved by this system. You, you will be targeted first when the globalists actually take over. And you know that in your gut. And there is an awakening happening worldwide. And we are that tip of the spear. And I am so proud of Texas. We will take our rights back in San Antonio. We will take our rights back in Austin. We will take our rights back in Chicago. We will take our rights back in Beijing. We will take our rights back in Mexico City. We will take our rights back in Australia and England and everywhere else because there is a worldwide awakening that is happening right now. We must hang together and retake Texas and then the Republic because the globalists know the world is waking up to them, so they are accelerating a program to take over. We are in a key juncture in history. You can politically see it, you can feel it, you know it. And that's why I admire people like Martin Luther King who would be arrested for his basic rights and to stand up against laws that were unconstitutional. And it's the same thing, it's the same thing with the folks that are wearing their firearms openly, which is already legal and lawful in many states. In other areas, those laws are what are in violation of the supreme law of the land, the Bill of Rights, and the Constitution that only points out God-given basic rights that were there all along, but we have to breathe life into them. In closing, the reason we have to do this in an example of the tyranny we face is that everyone I know who lives in Hayes County, Williamson County, Travis County, and even in more rural areas than that, on 100 acre, 200 acre farms, are having folks move in, great folks who are ignorant. We need to wake them up and save them. They've been brainwashed, they're zombies. They're coming in and calling the police on folks when they're deer hunting or target shooting, and the police actually show up and arrest people even though there's no law because they've been told by the feds and get the 30 pieces of silver to do it. They are persecuting gun owners everywhere. We are a persecuted group because the globalists know that we're the seed of political understanding that will sweep away their tyranny. And that is why they're coming after us. So we have to either get on our knees as slaves or get on the offense and take this country back. Remember what Diane Einstein said. She said, if I could get the votes, Miss and Miss America, turn in all your guns. They want all our guns. They're not misguided. They're not misguided liberals. They are authoritarians who are arming to the teeth against us. They want to make us their slaves. And to Obama and Dianne Feinstein and all the tyrants like Joe Biden and all those that came before them, you can take my gun from my cold, dead hand. In the words of Charles and Heston, but believe me, we're not going to lay down if you offensively attack us. We're going to stand up just as they did at Lexington and Concord. They didn't shoot first. They didn't ask for the trouble, but they said if they mean to have a war, they're going to have one because these globalists, they are the usurpers that have come into our country and taken it over. They are the occupiers. They have captured our nation. They brag that they've captured America. Well, to chase Manhattan, to all the big mega banks, you don't run this country, you've stolen it by fraud, and we've identified you, and we're taking the republic back. God bless you all. Yeah! Yeah! And don't be mean to the Million Mom March, all five of them. These are pathetic zombies. Just realize they're stupid victims that want us to live like they do slaves.
Why is nascent iodine so important? Nascent iodine is so important because it goes directly to the thyroid. It's not bonded to a salt, which means it doesn't have to be broken down. And it's the most usable form. It's what the body uses. It's what the body is designed to use. If you have low energy levels, if you have pains, if you have thyroid problems, if you don't feel up to par, well, they've proven now that the fluoride and a lack of iodine causes a decreased IQ because you have all this stuff that builds up inside your system and builds up and builds up. And that's why some people, when they start taking iodine, will have what's called a Hertzheimer reaction or a detoxification reaction. But that's a good sign. That means you're detoxifying all that fluoride buildup, the mercury buildup in there, the bromine buildup in your system, and the chlorine buildup in your system. You don't want those things. All of those things have been proven as carcinogens. That's one of the reasons prostate cancer is on the rise, too, is because prostate takes up iodine. And the men that are lacking iodine causes the prostate to become cystic and causes the prostate to swell and eventually leads to prostate cancer. There's been an extreme rise in polycystic ovarian disease, PCOS, with women, fibrocystic breast disease, because iodine is stored in the breast tissue, the ovaries, the prostate glands in men. It's utilized by every single cell in the body. Mm, why does this almost taste good compared to other iodine that tastes horrible? That's because it's real iodine, atomic form. We wanted something that's going to go straight into the bloodstream and straight into the thyroid gland. We wanted to put it in a vegetable glycerin base. That's a USP kosher certified vegetable glycerin base. And that product is not tested on animals. It's vegan friendly. It's gluten free. It's GMO free. Of all the things I've done, nascent iodine was just absolutely amazing. So we developed with Dr. Group a double strength, low price. InfoWars Life. Dot com survival shield the atomic nation iodine available right now we want to interview the moms the marching what million mom march or whatever they are you know where they are down there maybe we have no yeah, idea we don't see that. roger that we can't even find them so we're going to go look for them and ask them a few questions about why they like gun control why they like statistically more deaths and why they like mexico so but we're trying we can't even find them anywhere are you the head of the local organization no i'm not i'm the head of the local hey how you doing i'm alex jones hi how are you doing good 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 yeah good. so so tell us tell us about what you're doing here today well i'm is this oh. I would prefer to um, to have just a moment to talk to you off camera before we, you know, you bring your cameras in to our event. Is that okay? Well, he's he's just right there. No, I he's not. In, it's it's just First Amendment. You're a public group. We're just wondering. I thought this was to raise awareness. If crime rates have dropped 49 percent since 1992 yes. because of gun ownership increasing. Why we want to be like Mexico, where they've taken all the guns, they have the highest crime rate in the world, or Chicago? Okay, I'm not going to stand here and be bullied by you into having a conversation that you know, um, is Mr. not. Whoa, no, whoa, I you just, whoa, your hand. she just yes. rammed into me. I know, I came over to ask you to please. Wow, you just, that, that's like assault. Oh, yes, it is. Isn't well, this you, a public event? Why did you touch me? Because you I don't like you. You don't like me? No. Why? Why did you leave her alone? We're having a peaceful time here. Well, I just don't You're want anybody talking. to touch me. You already slammed into me. You're not going to touch me, I are you, sir? You. Go Thank away. You. We don't want you here. We don't want you. What, what's wrong? We were so friendly. What public event is this if you don't want any exposure? We thought you wanted press. We're press. We're here to be friends. Okay, round and go. It went really well. We're going to have more of them. We're going to take our civil rights back. You're taking your civil rights? Just like in 1776. Who took, your, who took your civil rights? They've taken the guns in Chicago, New York, D.C. They're uh, taking your guns? Feinstein says the goal is to ban all the guns. It says right here. Nobody's trying to take your toys. They haven't, they haven't taken ban the guns? Assault weapons. Ban assault, assault weapons. No trying to take They're the guns. not trying to says right here. Wait, wait, wait. That's all semi-auto. Shut up and let me talk. Oh, oh yes, ma'am. You are not. You are not saying that correctly. We want to ban assault. She wants to ban assault Who's weapons she? in the Diane Feinstein. You're the one that brought her up. But, but Bloomberg wants a total wait, ban. Wait, wait, wait. But they don't want ha to confiscate have they people that are. Did they confiscate guns in New Orleans? Picking up every one of them. Mr. and Mrs. America, turn them all in. I would have done it. 
Have they banned the guns in Chicago and New York and D.C.? No, they have not. They have not I banned the guns. You do not want our guns. That's that's well, good. We want your guns. Good. We so, don't want you here. Santa Ana wanted the guns. In reality and statistics, you're very upset. We're very sorry no. that we brought facts and reality. What about the 49 percent drop in violent crime since 1992 because of gun ownership don't going up? I, I'm a libertarian. I shake my hand. Come on. Want a hug? How about a hug? How about a hug? Come on. Come on, I support. Yeah, here, here. We're being nice about this whole thing. Yeah, how about be friends? Here. No. What's your name? Matt. Matt. Yeah. Matt. Listen, you know Hitler was for gun control. It's gonna be 1776 70, again, isn't it? Well, well, we're trying to avert. The we're, conversation. We're trying to avert 1776. Once you bring up Hitler, you're obviously not serious about the conversation. Oh, no, but Lenin, Lenin and Stalin Lenin and Mao. And Stalin, Hitler. It's just, Santa Ana. They all came to take the guns. Governments like, don't try to take the guns. Uh, well, here's like people that like gun control had, ban them all in like Chicago, New York, and D.C. So, so why wouldn't we think that there's really a plan to register them and take them if they've taken them other places? Real question. Why do you assume I'm for that? Uh, no, no, but I'm saying the bills they're trying to move forward. The mayor pro team of Bruce, Austin Bruce said, Bruce. once we register your guns, we will confiscate them. That there is no gun ban currently, but because of the work that we're doing here today. We will make your side legitimate shortly, so you hang on to that. You may be one of the more moderate members, but that's the plan. It says, it says ban assault weapons, which is even semi-automatic, and ammunition magazines that hold more than 10 rounds. This is, this is a Bloomberg. You guys don't take money from Bloomberg. No money from Bloomberg. Your rally that you think was so successful, it's so well accepted in Texas. Does not accept it nationwide. And that'll be used to get guns other places. I know, but here's the deal. We are desensitizing people. Just like you guys say, the Attorney General said we've got to brainwash people that guns can't even be seen in the hands of citizens. So we're not brainwashing, we're reversing. We're openly saying, look, we have a right to own guns. I don't want people walking around with assault rifles on their backs, walking into Walmart, Starbucks. I, we don't need But that. you like cops with guns everywhere. Yes, I Can want I the cops your to question? have guns. Here's the deal. Yes. We're going to have the guns everywhere, and if you guys try to take them, I don't 1776. Want the cops. <laughs> you, you, you know guys. what a gun grab is? It's something that nobody in this country wants. If I could have gotten 51 votes in the Senate of the United States for an outright ban, picking up every one of them, Mr. and Mrs. America, turn them all in, I would have done it. A gun grab is something that nobody in this country well, wants. Well, sir, all I can say is you are really getting in my space. Like your wife came over and pushed up against well, me. Why don't you back up? No, I'm not going to back up. Good. You're the one who got in my space. You know look what? at this. Look at this guy. Stop. All right, go ahead. Stop. You, you, Stop. Listen, I don't want to beat an old guy up, so don't touch me, all right? This guy could take just... you out in a heart. I bet he could. Here. I'm not violent. Why do you think it's okay to sell a gun to someone that you don't know that's not been through a background check. Should we have a should we have a background check for bathtubs every time we take a bath? We should have a background check oh. for guns. Should we have a background check for knives? You don't believe in a background well, check? No. Have you heard about We all know it's a check? registration. We have your documents. Have you read the bill 1565 that says it's against the law to keep a registration and it's a $15,000 fine? But they've fine caught them keeping it. A gun? They've caught them keeping it. I what do you think about knives? Myself. I mean there's Bonnie, a knife sweetheart. assault. You're giving them what they want. Don't do it anymore. Listen, don't listen to the facts. Don't listen to the statistics. Just yell at us and well, call us names. That is the only thing that works. Did you know assault rifles are used in 2% of crimes? I know an assault rifle was used to murder my daughter in Aurora. I know that. Well, I'm sorry that... Yeah, you're, you're sorry. Not. I didn't curse no, your daughter. I mean, that's the big issue is there's probably five people here against the guns. And they're, and they're claiming it's probably true. There's a guy a lot of sadness in his eyes that it's his loved one that was lost at Aurora. And that that's basically our fault. And the, and the media is preying on these victims of gun control and gun-free zones like movie theaters, schools, and military bases, where the SWAT team was ordered to stand down at the Naval Yard. They are preying on us. And they're preying on people that have had loved ones that are lost in our pain to then blame others that have the right to self-defense when overall in the aggregate, guns are saving more lives than they're losing by 40 plus percent to one. If you look at just just 20 years ago, it was 20 plus times a gun was used to stop crime or murder. Now it's 40 plus times on average. And so I'm like, here's the average. I'm sorry bad stuff happens. It's like cars. God forbid my daughter die in a car wreck. I'm not going to then go out. Uh, if it's a drunk driver, then I'm going to blame him. I'm not going to blame Ford or Chevy. These people don't get they've lost. We know who they are. We're the liberals. Thomas Jefferson's a liberal. These people are authoritarians or useful idiots of the authoritarians. 